Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Wayne. This series tells the story of a 16-year-old boy with a heart of gold who sets out on a small two-stroke road bike with his new friend. They about to get back the shit-hot 79 Transom stolen from his father before he died. Along the way, these two teenagers meet many challenges and pursuits. Will their quest come to an end in the end? And could love grow in the middle of their journey? Let's find out in Wayne. Wayne begins by showing a young man named Wayne who is dealing with three delinquents. At first, Wayne and the three delinquents just stared at each other fiercely. However, over time they felt fed up. One of the young men then told Wayne to get out of there. Because Wayne didn't move from his place at all, the young man then threw a lump of hardened snow at Wayne's bicycle. Without showing any expression on his face, Wayne then picked up the snowflake onto the workshop building behind the boys, breaking the windows. Not long after, the workshop owner came out and scolded the three delinquents in front of his workshop. However, the three youths pointed to Wayne as the one who had broken the window glass, so the man who owned the repair shop then beat Wayne, while the three young delinquents slammed Wayne's bicycle into pieces. An annoyed Wayne then broke the workshop window again before finally walking away, leaving his broken bicycle. The scene then switches and shows Wayne walking towards his house. A man with his dog approaches Wayne as he is about to enter his home. That man is Mr. Hernandez, his landlord who intends to collect rent from Wayne's father. Because Mr. Hernandez continued to insist that Wayne pay the rent, Wayne threw the sticks he was carrying, causing Mr. Hernandez's dog to run after him, causing the man to slip and injure his hand. Shortly after Wayne had entered the house, there was a knock on the door. Wayne who thought that it was Mr. Hernandez, then opened the door in anger. But it turned out that what came was a girl named Delilah, or usually called Del, who wanted to sell cookies to Wayne. Wayne was instantly attracted to Del at first sight and invited her into his house and tried to get her attention. The next day, while Wayne is at Hagler High, he finds that some of his books have been missing from his locker. Wayne immediately went to the principal to report the incident. Seeing Wayne's arrival, two students in the principal's room immediately rushed away. Wayne immediately reported his textbooks missing from his locker, but the principal instead told him to leave his room. When he was about to return to class, Wayne saw some boys bullying his best friend, a young man named Orlando. Without a second thought, Wayne went straight to them, beat up the bully and helped Orlando. After that, Wayne visited Dell's house to buy cookies sold by her. Not long after, when Wayne and Dell were walking alone, Dell's father and her brothers approached them and immediately beat Wayne. That night, Wayne met his father who was lying sick, where his father then gave him an envelope filled with money. Wayne was about to go to the person who was causing the noise by setting off the firecrackers, but his father asked him to stay and showed him a photo. In the photo, a man and a woman are seen posing in front of a car. Wayne's father said that the car belonged to him which had now been stolen. Because the firecrackers sounded so disturbing to his father, Wayne then rushed away and intended to beat up the person who set the firecrackers. He found two boys who seemed happy to set off firecrackers and fireworks. Wayne then took all the remaining firecrackers and fireworks before the boys started lighting them again. He accidentally saw the two boys who looked happy with their parents outside the house. Wayne, who is the only child from a broken home family, can only look down sadly at the other children who have complete families and both parents who love them very much. When he returned home, Wayne was devastated to learn that his father had breathed his last peacefully in his bed. Wayne then prepared all the necessary equipment and rushed off to meet Mr. Hernandez to hand over a thick envelope. Mr. Hernandez, who thought that the envelope contained money, had been tricked by Wayne because the envelope only contained paper. Not only that, but Wayne then burned his house and his father's body in it. He also set fire to Dell's father's dog kennel in retaliation for the man hitting him. Then, he casually entered Dell's house, past her brothers who were watching television in the living room and headed for Dell's room. Wayne's arrival there is to invite Dell to get back his father's stolen car. Without thinking, Dell accepted Wayne's invitation. Before leaving, Dell's brother tried to block them, but Wayne managed to overcome them both by dropping a television from the top of the stairs. When they are out of the house, Dell's father tries to stop Wayne and Dell from leaving. However, Wayne attacked him with fireworks aimed straight at him. Wayne and Dell's father got into a fierce fight, before Wayne finally recklessly bit Dell's father's nose and rushed away with Dell on a motorbike. Wayne and Dell headed to Ocala, Florida, which is believed to be the location of the car's current whereabouts. After traveling quite a distance, Wayne and Dell stopped in the woods to look for food, but Dell didn't like the food Wayne had prepared for her. Meanwhile, Dell's father and her brothers are at the police station to report the incident of assault by Wayne against them and also about Delilah who they report being kidnapped by Wayne. Turning to Wayne and Dell, enjoying food at a simple diner, Dell left the table and headed to the toilet. Not long after, Dell appears to be calling Wayne from a distance and asking him to buy sanitary napkins at a nearby store and Wayne does so. 
However, Wayne has to visit several stores because he is embarrassed and reluctant to buy sanitary napkins. Wayne met a delinquent man when he was about to enter a convenience store. After taking some of the equipment needed by Dell, Wayne rushed to the cashier's desk to make payment. But then, he saw the delinquent man intimidating a female employee at the convenience store, who turned out to be his girlfriend. Wayne didn't stay silent either. He tied the bad boy to a power pole and destroyed his bicycle. Wayne hurried back to the diner, but when he got there, Dell had already gone somewhere. Wayne finally saw Dell who seemed to rush away from the place. She looked annoyed because she thought Wayne had left her and mocked him a little because of his rude attitude and often fighting with other people. Dell also questioned Wayne who seemed not so sure about the purpose of their trip, so she decided to go home. Because Dell asked Wayne not to follow her, Wayne complied with her wishes and chose to return to where they spent the night in the forest. But when he got there, Wayne saw two teenage boys searching his belongings. Seeing Wayne's arrival, the two boys looked very shocked and frightened, begging him not to kill them. One of the boys seemed interested in the jacket Wayne was wearing and Wayne volunteered to give it away. Knowing that Wayne is arguing with Dell, whom he considers his girlfriend, the two teenage boys then advise him not to give up and go after Dell. Wayne then asks the distance to the bus stop and wants to get there by motorbike, but it turned out that his motorbike ran out of fuel, while if he walked, he would not have time to catch Dell to the bus stop. One of the boys said that a shortcut could be taken and would arrive at the bus stop faster. However, the road is guarded by a delinquent man named Lee Ray because the shortcut turns out to be a golf course. However, Wayne didn't care about that because the most important thing for him was to fight for Delilah. As soon as he entered the golf course, Wayne was immediately confronted by Lee Ray, who was on guard with a rifle. Lee Ray warned Wayne not to enter the area, but because Wayne insisted, Lee Ray shot him. The scene then switches and shows Dell at the bus stop. Dell then gets into an argument with a ticket-selling woman named Tracy who turns out to be a saleswoman at the diner she and Wayne had previously visited. Meanwhile, Lee Ray takes Wayne to his house and holds him captive. Lee Ray apparently fired a blank bullet and threatened to kill Wayne if he told everyone about the shooting incident. Not long after, Lee Ray's girlfriend, Kyra, came and seemed angry that Lee Ray had not gotten rid of Wayne. Lee Ray apparently still sympathized with Wayne who he thought was just a spoiled snotty teenage boy, even though Kyra didn't think so. Lee Ray suggested to Kyra to give Wayne one chance and Kyra seemed to agree, then gave Wayne a challenge with his knife. If Wayne can complete the challenge, then they will free him. Meanwhile, Dell and Tracy finally make up after their feud and seem to be having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Tracy tells Dell about Wayne who hates coffee but is willing to spend three cups of coffee for her and thinks Wayne might not be as bad as Dell thought. When Dell decides to go with Tracy, she accidentally crosses paths with two teenage boys, one of whom is wearing a Wayne jacket. Dell then approached the two teenage boys who told her that Wayne was being held captive by Lee Ray. Elsewhere, when Kyra has made her turn and tells Wayne to do her challenge, Dell suddenly arrives with a woodcutter. While Wayne distracts Kyra, Dell then attacks Lee Ray with the woodcutter. Dell and Wayne manage to immobilize Lee Ray, but Kyra then picks up the rifle that Lee Ray dropped and points it at Wayne and Dell. When almost pushed by Kyra, Tracy suddenly comes and kicks Kyra unconscious. After that, Wayne and Dell finally reconciled and decided to be friends before finally getting ready to continue their trip to Florida. After refueling their motorbike, Wayne and Dell went to the convenience store to buy some equipment. Meanwhile, Dell's father continues to search for Dell and Wayne with the help of Sergeant Jeller and Mr. Hernandez. That night, in the middle of heavy rain, Dell was seen giving some money to a woman prostitute and asking for her help so that she and Wayne could stay in a simple motel. The woman then agreed to Dell's request and managed to get a room for them. The next day at Hagler High, several students were interviewed by the police to help investigate Wayne's crimes. However, Orlando instead told Sergeant Jeller and his colleagues that the bullying at school would have only intensified without Wayne's presence. Wayne would not remain silent about seeing students who were frequently bullied while the school did absolutely nothing to eradicate bullying cases. Meanwhile, Dell and Wayne, who were preparing to swim in the artificial swimming pool at the motel where they were staying, were suddenly surprised by a group of people arriving by bus. They are tourists who intend to have fun by visiting some inns that they consider lousy. Now that Wayne is a fugitive who is thought to have kidnapped Dell, Dell asks him to disguise their identity in front of the tourists. Dell seemed happy to spend time with the tourists drinking and playing games together, but not so with Wayne, who seemed nervous for fear that his real identity would be exposed and they would report it to the police. In a game of truth or dare, Wayne appears to be at odds with a young man who considers him a master liar. An annoyed Wayne then challenges the young man to bike from the motel's upstairs balcony and plunge into the pool. The young man thought it was impossible to do, so he refused the challenge. But then, Wayne proved that nothing is impossible to do, and he managed to complete the challenge. Knowing that his property had been vandalized, the man who ran the motel called the police. Dell and Wayne hurried away from there, 
as did the tourists who immediately ran to escape, although they were caught in the end. Dell and Wayne managed to hide and outwit the cops before finally getting ready to leave. However, when Dell checked her bag, she realized that all her money had disappeared and assumed that the thief was the woman prostitute who helped them last night. Meanwhile in Ocala, Florida, two men were seen, one of whom was the person in the photo shown by Wayne's father. The two men were in a car believed to be Wayne's father's car. A caravan trailer suddenly hit their parked car. The two men immediately got out of the car and destroyed the caravan trailer without thinking. After successfully escaping from the police, Wayne and Dell hide in one of the houses about to be rented out. Dell and Wayne were finally able to spend the night in a comfortable place and cleaned up after losing all their money. But then, the real estate agent who handled the house came there and brought along a couple who wanted to rent the luxury house. Dell managed to outwit them by dropping a vase of flowers right on top of the real estate agent's luxury car, before they finally managed to escape from there before being caught and reported to the police. Meanwhile, Sergeant Jeller and his subordinate, an officer named Jay, are seen getting ready to head to Florida to find Wayne first before he gets into trouble in Florida which is outside his jurisdiction. Sergeant Jeller wants to know Wayne better and believes he deserves a second chance to become a better young man. Meanwhile, now that they have no money and run out of fuel to travel, Dell suggests Wayne work as a casual day laborer. Despite having no experience in construction, Wayne finally heeded Dell's advice. Meanwhile, Dell seems to have gone to a pawn shop and is about to pawn her late mother's necklace. However, she meets a woman and her daughter who seem to be in dire need of money for her husband's funeral and Dell decides to help her get the money from the pawn shop. At work, Wayne gets verbally abusive treatment from his boss, but he tries to restrain himself because he is currently in need of money. That evening, when they came home and met Dell, they were seen talking about the woman's husband's funeral and Dell insisted on attending the funeral. The next day, Wayne is seen at work when he accidentally makes the mistake of destroying the wrong wall. Wayne again received a scolding from his boss. However, his co-workers immediately defended him by saying that the wall was moldy so it had to be demolished. His boss did not respond further and just ordered them to get back to work. Meanwhile, Dell is seen in a shopping center and intends to buy a black dress to attend the funeral of the woman's husband. But because the price of the dress was quite high, she was reluctant. Unexpectedly, one of the store employees sympathized with Dell and gave the black dress for free. After that, Dell went to church. Turning back to Wayne who was sitting alone, suddenly one of his co-workers approached him and offered him his lunch. Wayne happily accepts the food and thanks the man for defending him before their boss about the mold on the wall. After lunch, Wayne was told that their boss would take casual day laborers who were illegal immigrants to the immigration office so that he would benefit from not having to pay their wages. Wayne, who can't just stay silent when others are being bullied, then steals his boss's car and chases them. After successfully stopping the car and immobilizing his boss, he rushed to help his co-workers. He told them that their boss intended to report them to the immigration office because they were illegal immigrants, so they would not be paid. After knowing this, the illegal immigrants thanked Wayne and hurried away from there. Wayne then came to church, following Dell to attend the funeral of the woman's husband. Meanwhile, Dell's father was seen refueling his car at a gas station somewhere in North Carolina. Dell's father and her brothers are traveling to Florida to find Dell after learning that Wayne may have gone to Florida. Not long after that, a man in elegant clothes approached Dell's father and yelled at him for overtaking his car on the way to the gas station. Dell's father seemed calm even though the man continued to hurl harsh words at him, before finally he poured gasoline on the man. Thinking that Dell's father would burn him alive, the man begged him for forgiveness. But it turns out that Dell's father only scares the man before continuing his journey to Florida. Because they have no money, Wayne and Dell who are in a fast food restaurant, are forced to wait for the restaurant's customers who have paid but have not finished their food. When Wayne went to the toilet, suddenly some men from the school disciplinary committee came to the restaurant to raid the students who skipped school and thought that Dell was one of the students. Because Dell refused to be taken away, despite saying that she wasn't a student at the school and trying to fight back, she was finally taken away by force. Wayne, who had just come out of the toilet, then asked the restaurant employee where Dell was who told him that Dell had been taken away by the school disciplinary officer. Wayne rushed outside and tried to chase them. Arriving at Alabaster High, Dell is seen serving her sentence together with two schoolgirls named Trish and Jenny, and they immediately form close friendships with the two of them. Meanwhile, Wayne's best friend, Orlando, is seen with the principal at an inn as they are on their way to catch Wayne to Florida. Orlando believes that Wayne is not what Dell's father alleged because he is not a bad person and would not have sparked a fight had it not been for previous bullying or intimidation. On the other hand, Wayne finally arrives at Alabaster High. He desperately rides his motorbike through the school corridors to find Dell. Hearing Wayne's distinctive motorcycle engine, Dell slipped out of the library and rushed off to ride a motorcycle with Wayne. 
Elsewhere, Sergeant Jeller encounters Wayne's former boss who reports to the police about Wayne assaulting him and injuring his hand with a drill. However, Sergeant Jeller soon learned that the man was often defrauding the casual daily laborers, especially illegal immigrants, so that he would not have to pay them. Dell and Wayne reunite with Trish and Jenny who intend to take them to a dance held at school. Dell looks excited and intends to attend the party, but Wayne doesn't think that the party is really bad. Jenny then invites Dell and Wayne over to her house and offers them some clothes they can wear to the party. However, Wayne, who didn't seem interested in attending the party, then told Dell that she could stay and go to the party if it pleased her since Wayne was planning to continue his trip to Florida. An annoyed Dell then scolded Wayne, but he instead walked away leaving Dell and her new friends. Wayne took the time to stop by a fast food restaurant and get a little enlightenment about the importance of fighting for the woman he loves because opportunities don't come twice. That night while at a party, Dell is approached by a handsome young man who invites her to dance. But Dell turned it down because she was still expecting Wayne. Unexpectedly, Wayne finally came to the party wearing a chic pink suit. Seeing Dell being approached by another man, Wayne immediately felt furious. However, he doesn't necessarily use violence and surprisingly, he instead kneels in front of Dell and invites her to dance with him. Wayne and Dell seem to be having fun on the dance floor doing some out-of-the-box dance. After that, Wayne and Dell head out of the building to be alone and clear up the misunderstanding that occurred between them earlier, where Wayne reveals that he doesn't want to take away the things that make Dell happy and force his will on her. Hearing that, Dell seemed touched and realized that actually she wanted to be with Wayne and only wanted to do things that could make her happy together with Wayne. But then, in the middle of their conversation, Dell's father and her brother suddenly arrived there and attacked Wayne. They then beat Wayne all out in retaliation for what Wayne did to them. However, when Wayne was pressed, suddenly the students of Alabaster High burst out of the building, attacking Dell's father and her brothers to help Wayne. Even though he was badly injured, Wayne managed to get up and with the help of Dell, he headed to his motorbike and hurriedly left the place with Dell. Meanwhile elsewhere, Sergeant Jeller and his partner, Jay, are still trying to find out where Wayne is. Jay then told Sergeant Jeller that Dell's father managed to find his daughter with Wayne, and he was seen beating Wayne in a video uploaded to social media by one of Dell's brothers a few minutes ago. Wayne and Dell then returned to Jenny's house. Seeing Wayne's serious condition, Dell suggested that they go to the hospital to treat his injuries. But Wayne rejects the idea because he is now a fugitive. Dell looks a little frustrated because she has to treat Wayne's injury alone. Dell then asked Trish and Jenny for help. However, instead of helping, they both forced Wayne to take drugs. Wayne, who had never taken drugs before, tried to refuse. But Trish and Jenny shoved the drugs straight into his mouth and before long, Wayne was finally fast asleep. The next morning, Dell was surprised to see Wayne sitting across from her and staring at her with a strange look on his face. Wayne said he was very happy to see Dell, but Dell suspected that Wayne was high from taking drugs. Wayne questions why Dell is sleeping in the bathtub, but before she can explain further, suddenly Trish and Jenny burst into the bathroom and ask them to hide because Jenny's father is coming soon. However, instead of hiding, Wayne bravely confronted Jenny's father and told the man the truth, leaving him shocked enough to be speechless and decide to leave. Meanwhile, Dell's father and her brothers, who are being treated in hospital for their injuries in a beating incident, are suddenly approached by Sergeant Jeller and Jay. They ask him to share some information about the incident in Alabaster High involving Wayne and Dell. However, Dell's father could not contain his anger and blamed everything that happened to Sergeant Jeller. He considered him incompetent to do his job as a police officer because he had not been able to find Wayne and Dell until now. On the other hand, Wayne and Dell, who were about to continue their journey, decided to stop at a convenience store to buy fuel and supplies. While Dell was going to the toilet, Wayne saw a news broadcast on television that reported a gang incident at Alabaster High. Dell's father was victimized and was injured badly enough to be rushed to the hospital. Wayne's expression seemed to change upon knowing this, as if he felt very guilty for the misfortune that befell Dell's father. After that, Wayne told Dell about her father's condition and suggested that she visit him at the hospital, thinking that her father might be dying. Wayne decided to wait outside while Dell went inside the hospital. When Dell was about to enter her father's treatment room, she heard her father scolding her brothers with swearing and harsh words, awakening her to her past trauma when her father often scolded her and treated her harshly after her mother died. Meanwhile, Wayne, who was waiting for Dell outside, was suddenly approached by a young man named Bradley who bought Wayne a bag of cookies from the vending machine. The young man then told Wayne that he had just made a 19-year-old girl pregnant and it had completely changed his life especially because he feels he is not ready to be a father and build a household. After telling his story, Bradley said he was interested in Wayne's motorcycle. Not long after, Dell came to see Wayne and asked him to buy liquor. She then mixes some liquor with milk and intends to give it to her father. For the second time, Dell is readmitted to the hospital. However, when they were about to go to Dell's father's treatment room, 
Wayne and Dell saw two police officers standing guard in the corridor. They immediately hid in the nearest room, which was a morgue. Knowing that someone was coming, Wayne and Dell then hid under one of the coffins. It turned out that the two policemen had entered the morgue who intended to identify the body. After confirming that the corpse they saw was not the suspect in the murder case they were looking for, the two policemen finally left. Dell then tells Wayne about his father's demeanor which changed drastically after her mother died. She said that she would have no one else when her father died, but Wayne said that now she had him, and after that, they kissed. Dell managed to sneak into her father's treatment room, give him the drink she had made, and chat briefly before finally leaving with Wayne. But then, Wayne and Dell accidentally crossed paths with Sergeant Jeller who then chased them both. When Sergeant Jeller finally managed to corner Wayne and Dell, he tried to speak kindly to them. He persuades them to give up whatever they were trying to accomplish in Florida out of concern for their own safety and future. However, Wayne and Dell ignore Sergeant Jeller, immobilizing him, and rush to escape. Jay who knows this then chases Wayne and Dell outside the hospital building. Thinking that someone was Wayne because he was wearing the same jacket and was about to ride his motorbike, Jay then paralyzed the young man and it turned out that he was not Wayne, but Bradley. Wayne and Dell apparently escaped by hitching a ride in someone's car heading to Florida. When they finally arrived in Florida, Wayne and Dell decided to stop by a convenience store and grab some food. A group of delinquent men then entered the shop and made some noise there. When he was outside, Dell then offered Wayne a cup of coffee. Because he didn't like coffee, Wayne immediately vomited the coffee he drank back onto the hood of someone's car. However, he was surprised when he saw the car which was very similar to the car belonging to his late father. One of the delinquents who made a commotion in the shop then came out and ordered Wayne to clean the hood of his car. Wayne looked furious, but he chose to obey the bad boy's orders, especially since he was with his friends. After he cleaned the car's hood from the dirt, the other bad boys appeared and rushed into the car. Wayne immediately recognized one of the delinquents who turned out to be the man in the photo his father showed before his death, a man believed to have stolen his father's car. After they leave, Wayne tells Dell that the car is his father's car. He then went back into the shop and managed to get the addresses of the delinquents and rushed to their place. Once there, Wayne asks Dell to outsmart the car so they can take him away from there while he will face the bad boys alone. Wayne deliberately started a fight with them until his face was battered. However, when the real fight actually happened, a woman suddenly came and tried to break them up. How surprised Wayne and the woman were when they looked at each other because it turned out that they were the mother and her son. Wayne's mother, Maureen, apparently left Wayne when he was five years old. Maureen later married a man named Calvin, the man in the photo shown by Wayne's father. And the young man who asked Wayne to clean the hood of his car was Reggie, Wayne's stepbrother. Wayne and Dell are then invited to lunch together by his mother and her new family, where Reggie tries to upset Wayne by spoiling Maureen, even though Reggie is not Maureen's biological son. Wayne then told his mother that his father had died. Maureen immediately fell silent and couldn't say anything after hearing the news of the death of Wayne's father, as well as Calvin and Reggie. However, things quickly thaw and Reggie makes fun of Wayne again, making him jealous of his close relationship with Maureen. But then, an annoyed Wayne threw the bowl at Reggie and seemed satisfied that he had managed to get back at him. While Wayne and Dell are sitting together to discuss their next plan, Reggie comes up to them and takes Wayne somewhere, while Maureen asks Dell to help her wash the dishes in the kitchen. Dell and Maureen seemed to be chatting casually before finally their conversation heated up when Dell mentioned Maureen who left her family when Wayne was very small. An annoyed Dell then drops Maureen's favorite pottery bowl. Meanwhile, Reggie showed him his new car, which was a birthday present for him from his parents. Wayne looked irritated, especially after Calvin purposely annoyed Wayne by telling him to change the radiator water. Wayne was annoyed then slammed the car hood and left the two of them. When Wayne went into the kitchen, he saw Dell cleaning up the pottery shards on the floor. Wayne then helped her and, after that, looked at the refrigerator door, where there were several photos of Maureen who looked happy with her new family. Wayne immediately felt brokenhearted because his mother apparently preferred to live with his new family rather than with himself who is her biological son. Maureen then showed him some of his childhood photos which he still keeps neatly. After that, she took Wayne and Dell to shop for clothes and toiletries, although Dell didn't seem excited because she felt neglected, especially after Wayne was more willing to obey his mother's wishes than Dell. Maureen then asked Dell to take a picture of herself and Wayne as a memento that she would display on the refrigerator door. Because Wayne continues to ignore her, who seems happy that he is now getting his mother's attention, Dell then deliberately commits a theft at the shopping center. When the mall security officer checked Dell's bag and found the item she stole, Maureen then persuaded the man not to take the theft case to court because Dell is still a teenager and only needs guidance and firm action at home. The security guard understood and then let them go after taking back the items stolen by Dell. Arriving at the house, Dell again questioned the purpose of Wayne coming there who originally only wanted to get his father's car back and get out of there. But apparently, after finding the car and reuniting with his mother, 
His attitude changed drastically and he seemed comfortable with his new home and family, which he had longed for. Wayne said he found a bus ticket to Los Angeles in Dell's bag and thought she would leave it at any moment. They then got into an argument before finally an angry Dell decided to sleep in the living room carrying a pillow and blanket. Wayne started to worry about Dell not long after, then left the room and realized that she was gone. The scene then switches to some time before, showing a young man running scared towards his house. There was a knock on the door, but before the young man tried to open the door to his house, he was suddenly attacked by someone who brutally beat him and killed him. Turning back to the present, after leaving Maureen's house, Dell was seen visiting a public swimming pool and decided to spend the night there after getting permission from a female guard. The next day, Wayne and his mother talk about their next move, with Maureen contemplating making up for her mistake of leaving Wayne. Hearing this, Wayne seemed happy and then helped his mother to make an aromatherapy candle display case which was a side business that Maureen was doing. However, knowing this, Calvin was furious and told Maureen to immediately kick Wayne out of his house because he didn't want him to live in his house, let alone pay for his living expenses, even though Wayne now had no one else. Meanwhile elsewhere, Orlando and the principal, who were about to follow Wayne and Delta Florida, had a slight accident when they nearly hit a dog in the middle of the road. The incident caused the car driven by the principal to go off the track but no one was injured or died. Elsewhere, Dell, who had just woken up from her sleep, was surprised by the situation in the swimming pool which was already crowded with visitors. Dell looks happy to see mothers swimming with their babies. However, the female guard returned to her and asked her to leave immediately. The stubborn Dell refused and purposely entered the swimming pool fully clothed. Meanwhile, after being severely scolded by Calvin, Maureen then goes to Wayne and with a heavy heart, tells him that he has to leave the house because it is Calvin's house, so she has no right to let anyone including Wayne, stay in the house without Calvin's permission. Wayne is angry because he feels betrayed, then destroys the things in the house and wants to take away his father's car. But apparently, Calvin and Reggie had anticipated this, so they could immediately catch Wayne and hold him captive. Meanwhile, Dell, who was going back to Brockton, Massachusetts, didn't have enough money to buy a bus ticket, so she had to beg at the bus station. But then, coincidentally, Orlando and the principal are also there and they finally meet. Dell immediately hugged the principal and wept bitterly in his arms. Elsewhere, Wayne, held captive by Calvin, is about to be executed by the man, but suddenly, Sergeant Jeller and Jay appear and ask Calvin and Reggie where Wayne is. Sergeant Jeller apparently already knew Wayne's purpose in coming to Florida. Reggie then shows Wayne being held captive and manages to incapacitate Jay before threatening Sergeant Jeller to go in there and plan to kill them both. Meanwhile, Dell tells the principal and Orlando that she wants to go home because Wayne is now ignoring her after finding the joy of being reunited with his mother. But then, Orlando told her that Wayne had done something very brutal when he was about to protect someone very close to him. Even he did not hesitate to commit violence to the point of taking his life just to protect those closest to him. After hearing Orlando's story, Dell finally realized that Wayne had done something to the young man who had threatened to spread obscene videos about Dell's mother, and that the young man was the guy who was attacked by someone while hiding in his house. Orlando told Dell that Wayne had been keeping Dell's secret all this time and he would not hesitate to use violence to ensure her safety and security. Hearing this, Dell got up and left, followed by Orlando and the principal. Switch back to Sergeant Jeller who accepts Calvin's challenge to fight one-on-one -on -one with his bare hands. Although at first Calvin boasted and underestimated Sergeant Jeller, but in the end Sergeant Jeller managed to overthrow the big man with a little help from Wayne. Sergeant Jeller then named Wayne a suspect for his reckless actions and took him to the Ocala for questioning. Sergeant Jeller managed to persuade the Florida police to transfer Wayne's case to Brockton, Massachusetts so that he could handle it directly. Sergeant Jeller thought that Wayne was not as much as Dell's father and his brothers claimed and he was not as brutal as the young man himself was. Sergeant Jeller then told about his past with his father and Wayne seemed a little touched. He then gave Wayne a little advice and hoped to see him one more time in Brockton. Elsewhere, Dell, the principal and Orlando go to Maureen to find out where Wayne is, but the woman said that if the police arrested Wayne, so did Calvin who had to go back behind bars for assaulting a police officer. Dell then rushed to the Ocala Police Department, while the principal and Orlando stayed with Maureen to take care of their dog who was about to give birth. On the other hand, Reggie purposely releases a beast in his animal captivity to distract the police so he can easily enter the police station to retrieve his car and kill Wayne. Sure enough, not long after, the police received so many reports from residents that informed them of wild animals that broke into their homes, forcing the police to mobilize all troops to deal with wild animals that roamed residential areas. Meanwhile, Reggie who had arrived at the police station managed to retrieve his car keys after incapacitating a police officer. Reggie and Wayne then engage in a fierce battle that is very brutal. However, Wayne is in a pinch when Reggie drops a cupboard that hits his emaciated body, immobilizing him. 
Reggie then steals a police rifle and tries to kill Wayne, but then, Dell arrived just in time and managed to stop him. Dell looks so furious that Reggie is about to kill Wayne, whom she now proudly admits as her boyfriend. After dropping Reggie, Dell rushed to help Wayne. However, Reggie quickly got up and immediately attacked Dell, strangling her and about to kill her. Seeing his girlfriend whose life was being threatened, Wayne mustered all the strength he had left to get up, grabbed his pride hammer and knocked Reggie down until his golden teeth fell off and knocked him unconscious. After that, Wayne tells Dell to get the car keys in Reggie's jacket and rushes there by supporting Wayne who seems to have difficulty walking because of his injuries. Dell suggested that they go to the hospital because of Wayne's severe injuries, but Wayne refuses because the police will arrest him immediately if they go to the hospital. Elsewhere, the principal looks so happy that his dog gave birth to the puppies safely and he then names them after some of his dead dogs. In the despair and anxiety that filled her heart, Dell could no longer hold back her tears and then intended to express her love for Wayne. However, Wayne first confessed his love for Dell, before their car was hit by Dell's father causing Dell to faint. Her brothers then took Dell away, while Dell's father approached Wayne and beat him to death to take revenge on Wayne for what he had done to them. The helpless Wayne could only surrender when he found out that Dell had been taken away. With all his might, he tried to reach Dell's necklace, which had fallen on the ground, before finally falling unconscious just as the ambulance came to save him. After the incident, Sergeant Jeller arrested Reggie for assaulting a police officer and causing chaos at the police station, while Wayne had to serve his sentence by languishing in prison. However, Wayne does not regret his actions at all and still keeps Dell's necklace as the most valuable thing in his life. The moral that we can learn from this film is about the importance of family attention and affection for a child's life because this will more or less affect the child in making every decision and determining his steps in this life. Not only that, through this series, we are shown an unusual form of love, as shown by Wayne. Wayne always thought that he was a barbarian, a ruthless person, came from a broken home family, so everyone always had a bad opinion of him, when in fact, Wayne is the person who cares the most about the circumstances around him and commits all acts of violence in return for intimidation and bullying by others. Like Sergeant Jeller said to Wayne, everything you do is based on love. You'd be surprised to learn how many people have been moved for the better by your actions that changed them.